Okay, let's just take a complex number z equals to cos cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, let's just take this for a moment. So we got a complex number z equals to cosine theta plus i sine theta in polar form. And then what the Morbius theorem says is that if we take z to the power of n, we take this to the power of n, we get something like this. Cosine n theta plus i sine n theta over here. Okay, now things are getting a little bit tricky because unlike these two simple results, this doesn't look so obvious. How can we can how we can bring the n inside? Okay, quickly going to z equals to Euler, Euler's formula over here. This is Euler's formula, okay? E i i e times i uh, theta. So we take to the power of n, we take this to the power of n, and due to the law of indices, we can times the n with the theta to give us something like this. And then when we write it out, we will get the one over here because the argument of the number is now n theta over there. Okay, this is all beautiful, it's all very nice. If we, if we got e inside here also, but let's just assume for a minute that Euler did not exist while we are doing complex numbers. Because like I said again, I don't know which one came first, but let's just say we don't have Euler's formula at our disposal. So we need to kind of prove this for n in the, sub, in the set of integers. Okay, positive and negative, may I remind you. So let's just see how we're gonna do it. Okay, we prove for a minute that n is equals to one. So if n equals to one, we got z equals to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So if n equals to one, z equals to cosine theta plus i sine theta, we put one over here, we put one over here, that's the result that we have. That means this is true for n is equals to one. Now we're gonna move on to n being a positive integer. n being a positive integer. Okay, so the approach is similar to the addition formula that I showed you just now. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take the magnitude of this and then I'm gonna take the argument of this number and I'm gonna show you that it's equal to this over here. So if the magnitude is equal, I mean, if I can prove that the magnitude is equal to this and the argument is equal to this over here, I've shown that this is equal to this for n in the positive integers, in the set of positive integers. Well, that is not too difficult to do. I mean, that's it. I've already shown it over here, okay? So the magnitude of this is equal to that and basically the magnitude of this is the complex number, take the magnitude n to the power of n. Okay, so we prove the magnitude side. Now we move on to the argument side, which goes as the argument of z to the power of n. And likewise, using that same result, which is why I say it was important to really show the result, is equals to n argument of z. And then since z, argument of z is equal to to theta, this is n times theta here. See, we started out with z equals to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So the argument of z is theta, theta here, n times theta. So the argument of z to the power of n is equals to n times theta over there. So basically, this is true for n in the realm of positive integers using these two results. Now, let's just say that n happens to be a negative integer. So how are we going to do that? Well, this is the way people think of it. It's not my way, okay? If n is in the set of negative integers, we write minus n and we denote m over here. Okay, basically, so m is now a positive integer because it's minus a negative integer over there. So if we can prove this for n, it means we are on our way. So we can write as z n is equals to 1 over cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of m. Okay, let's think about it for a minute. m is equals to minus n, correct? So m is equals to minus n, that means this is cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of minus n. And if it's the power of minus n, it is 1 over this to the power of n, but since it's in the denominator, 
we have to bring it to the top. I'll just quickly show it to you by this. It's equals to 1 over x to the power of minus n, which is equals to 1, 1 over x to the n. So this simply becomes x to the n, much like how we want over here. So this is equal to this. No doubt about that. Okay. And since that, m is equal to minus n, okay, n is in the negative integers, so m must be in the positive integers. We can simply bring this inside here, just like how we have done it, just like how we have shown that n is true for in the positive integers. So this is positive. We can now use the result we I have done previously for n in the realm of positive integers. Okay? So it's gonna go m theta plus i sine m theta. Okay. Looks quite nice, but not that nice. So what we can do is that using multiply, multiplying by its conjugate, just like how we want to rationalize the denominator, we will then factor it out and see what interesting thing we get. Interesting result. This is thus equals to 1 times this, no, not a problem. m theta take away i sine m theta over, okay, this one is i sine m theta times cosine m, m theta. That will cancel out with this one over here, okay? See, this is minus, this is plus. So, so you plus this, you minus this, that will cancel out. So we got basically this and this, cosine m theta plus this times this, right? So it's minus, i times i is negative, so it becomes a uh, plus, so this is cosine squared, and then sine squared m theta. Okay, so that is what we got. Let me just quickly check my working first. Okay, and then we know that this squared plus this squared, no matter what the value of this may be, Using the identity sine squared plus cosine squared, this is equal to 1. So basically, this would give us this. Okay, knowing that this gives us 1. Okay, so this is equal to this. Now we substitute this back inside here. So m is equal to ne negative n, which is equal to cosine minus n theta. Take away i sine minus n theta. And we know that the cosine function can absorb the negative sign and then for the sine function we can bring out the negative sign so it's a plus i sine and theta like this and there we go this one is equals to this for n in the set of negative num numbers okay that means this is true the Morgan's theorem is true for n in the set of integers sorry negative integers and integers okay now I know that the video in this video just taking I um, stumbled a bit on a few parts but I hope that this is as a complete proof that I can give you now for a few uh, for a full review you can just go ahead and see what I have on my website okay so there we go the movie still